welcome to another episode of the Miles Offside Podcast, where we talk a little bit of football and a whole lot of nothing. My name is Oscar Puente, also known as Footy From Afar, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts, Chuck Bailey and Ian Stimson. Howdy. Hello. Chuck, you can't wave. It's an oral medium. Is he muted? Uh, I don't know. You might be muted, but I can't hear you at all. <laughs> Genuinely can't hear you, Chuck. Oh, God damn it. Right. Hang on. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, can you hear now? Off to a good now? start. Yep. Okay. Did you want to start <laughs> again? Should we start again? Yeah. No, no. We're keeping this in for sure. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> it is very on brand. <laughs> <sighs> oh, so, Chuck, how's it going now that you're in? Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> well, how you guys doing? Rough weekend, huh? For all the clubs. Yeah. Uh, well, I think things went exactly as I predicted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same, actually. <laughs> yeah, true. What about you, Stimmers? Ugh. Uh, yeah, Peterborough went down again, too. Uh, Coventry, who cares? Terrible. Bradford, wasn't it? No, that was that was um, last week. 24th place Bradford. Oh, good. You've done your research. Lovely. Yeah, yeah. Had a little look. <laughs> Only because I realised League Two has League as much as we League One. I I still think of the of League One as League Two and the Championship as League One. <laughs> yeah. Um, Old Division Three. Go on. No, the, I was because I was looking. We we say that the Premier League is so tight at the minute, but I think if you look from position twenty four to eleven in uh, in League One. It's 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 separated by about nine to ten points. Yeah, and if you're looking at twenty one to twelve, it is three points separating twenty first to twelfth place. So it is a thirteen team relegation battle. Was the way I saw it phrased on Twitter. Yeah, that's amazing. Luckily, I think we are out of that. But I mean, God, fucking bleak. Uh, if you are a new listener, welcome. We are sometimes in a better mood than yeah, this. Enjoy an hour and a half of fucking misery. <laughs> uh, stick around. Yeah, we are happy to have you on board. Thank you for joining us. If you are a returning listener, thank you for coming back. Don't know what's wrong with you. Find better ways to spend your time, but we do appreciate Stop it. Stop doing that. <laughs> you do that every week. One day they'll all go. Uh, then Ian will leave, and then it will just be me and you not knowing how to record any of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least we were able to get Google Hangouts working significantly faster this week. Yeah, I mean, with one muted mic, but yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Progress. But yeah, so here's how it goes. We'd run through some news. We go through some main stories. Normally we would take a break, but this week we're not going to because there's not that much to do. And then there are listener questions and no fixtures to preview this time around. So that's part of why we're not taking a break. Yeah, because we don't care about international breaks now. We only care about them during major tournaments or the um, inaugural UEFA Nations League. UEFA Nations League, which is massively important. Champions elect, baby. Woo! Germany got relegated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I had forgotten about that. Never forget. Um, yeah, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it with our <clears throat> rapid, rapid, rapid fire news. I always fear this with trepidation. The last two top stories you've done. <laughs> it's like we've done the news backwards and it's just fluff pieces at the start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've definitely been putting the and finally pieces right at the top. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got to bury the lead, right? That's what they say in journalism schools. Yeah, yeah, we certainly do that. Yep, there you go. So, our top story this evening, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang is trying to decide should he use Spider-Man or Hulk for his next celebration. This is a thing or this is your top story? This is the top story, yeah. Oh, um, top. He celebrated a goal with a Black Panther mask last week. Yeah, I saw that. And there was quite a bit of controversy about it. People were giving him all sorts of stick. Really? And so he's he had a whole interview with Ian Wright on the BBC Sport website about should he use Spider-Man or should he use the Hulk ahead of the North London Derby? Where was where was the mask? Did he have it on him the whole time? Uh, I actually don't know. It must, it must have been down his shorts or something, wasn't it? Oh. It was a plastic mask, I'm pretty sure, so that couldn't have been comfortable. It's pretty minging. This has been down his shorts. How many games has it been down there? Was it like the Ian Wright one where he had, wasn't it the Nike, was it the 100 shirt or something? Yeah, he was wearing it for about seven or eight games. Oh my God, it's outrageous. Sweaty. Minging. Horrible. What do we think about celebrations with props and masks? Are we in or are we out? It's a bit 
I mean, the NFL did that like 15 years ago. Like those days are done, really. Like with all the elaborate celebrations or players getting done for having like sharpies in their socks and yeah, yeah, yeah the sharpies. I, I did like Mario Balotelli uploading his celebration to Instagram. That was yeah, a bit, that I was love a bit that. Weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he thought he was going to take a picture and then just did a video as well, and that <laughs> makes me feel with my own. T- technological inabilities as well <laughs> yes because you always do want to be put in the same boat as mario balotelli yeah. i'd be in a boat with mario balotelli he seems like he'd be pretty fun on a boat actually be great fun i'm still upset that he you know wasn't allowed like it was frowned upon when he was driving around in his ridiculous sports car handing out 10 grand to homeless people <laughs> it was a camouflage bentley or something weren't it uh, I thought it was a Lamborghini. Oh, yes. a Lamborghini. Yes, okay. that achieved that. That rings the bell that it was a camouflage paint job. Yeah, yeah, and it was either a Bentley or Lamborghini. I thought uh, Lamborghini, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay. I don't know. I'm a big fan of ridiculous celebrations. The more ridiculous, the better. Let's do a human pyramid. <laughs> Let's, uh, you know, somebody should bust out those ribbons and do like an Olympic interpretive <laughs> dance. <laughs> Rhythmic gymnastics. Yeah. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I'm all for it, man. Let's do it. Black Panther, cool. Spider Man, even better. Yeah. All right. So official stance of the podcast, we are all for masked celebration. Uh, but he can do Hulk. There we are. Number two. Number he, two, we're early. <laughs> he can be um, Hulk, but as long as he paints himself in green for the entirety of the match. <laughs> um, so everyone knows it's coming. Or just dumps green paint on his head after after scoring a goal. Yeah, I'm down with that. That sounds good. Yep. Yeah, if anything, that might make him a little faster, right? Because the slickness of the paint on the outside of his skin act like a lubricant against air resistance. I think it's aerodynamic. Cars have paint that's aerodynamic, and fighter jets have paint that's aerodynamic. That's dried. Yeah, I'm saying he can paint himself beforehand, and then he'll be faster. Well, he's going to gloss paint himself. Yeah. So as as he suffocates like Goldfinger or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, you wouldn't want that situation. Just a Bamiyang bright green lying in the centre circle. (laughs) I love green. (laughs) That's that's an Austin Powers reference for all the youth out there. All our listeners. All All for the the teenagers. teenagers. (laughs) All right. Next story. (laughs) Zinedine Zidane took his took charge of his first match for Real Madrid, immediately dropped Thibaut Courtois to the bench. Uh, and then the second news story is usually where Oscar gets petty. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm happy for you, mate, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's great. It's delightful. He, um, he like, when he was leaving, he said, I don't want him, don't sign him, and he didn't want him at all. And that was part of the sticking points as far as, like, why he wanted to leave was because they were pushing so hard for him and he didn't want him. Now that he's back, immediately dropped to the bench. So fuck Thibaut Courtois. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> well, Courtois wasn't the only one that got dropped. Uh, a bunch of guys made their way back into the team that had been favorites last year that hadn't been playing under Solari, specifically Kaylor Navas, Marcelo, Isco, and Marco Asensio, um, which does sort of shake things up there. Also, Bale is going to be... Bale was one of his favorite guys. So, yeah, so we'll see how this goes for Madrid, but it, they certainly needed to shake it up. I think we talked about how I think Zidane's really smart for going back when he went back. Yeah, we did. But there's all the rumors now of Real Madrid buying people and saying who they're going to buy. And unless they're going to spend a billion in like a transfer window, I can't see it happening. They could spend a billion in the transfer window. It's Real Madrid. Although uh, UEFA are cracking down more on FFP. Why? Just let everyone spend the money. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I agree. I think in American sports, just let everyone do steroids. Who cares? It's their choice. If they want to do steroids, they can do it. It destroys their body, but like that's their choice. They're adults. Yeah, let's have a steroid Olympics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. as much drugs and uh, and doping as you want. Let's just see how far the human body can go. Yes, absolutely. Ian's Ian's curiously quiet. No, no, I just I just want the the stances we take are strange sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, pro steroid Olympics. Let's go. Pro steroid everything. Don't you want to see a human run the 100 metres in four seconds? Hell yes. Absolutely. (laughs) Like people that have like surgically extra attached limbs. So, you know, (laughs) running like an octopus. Covered in acne and being really aggressive immediately. (laughs) Yeah, and then just like getting to the finish line and punching their wife. Very tiny testicles. (laughs) 
<laughs> Which yeah. also makes them more aerodynamic. So if anything, you know, win-win. Yeah, especially if they paint themselves painted, as well. Yeah. <laughs> painted steroids Olympics. Okay. Let's there see we it. go. I want to see someone score a bicycle kick from the 50-yard line. It would be cool. Yeah, I'm in. I mean, I'm not doing it, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's what's keeping you out of the Olympics? Is the steroids <laughs> the policy? The lack of steroids, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And for our last story this evening, Callum Hudson-Odoi was called up to the England squad from the U21s. But AWB was not. It's bullshit. Yeah. That my young it's player's better bullshit. than yours. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> no, he's definitely this not. plays for a top six team. Yeah, it's that's It's fucking right. bollocks. It yep. is. It is. Oh, Gareth Southgate, I'm going to pick on form, not on reputation. Bollocks. It is shocking that Trippy is... Trippy is there. Yeah. Alexander-Arnold's there. Kyle Walker's there. And it's and it's only because they play for top the teams in the top three, five, six, whatever. Yeah, yeah although in fairness, Hudson Odoi wasn't originally going to be in the squad. He just got called up after uh, Luke Shaw and Fabian Delph both withdrew. Although he doesn't play the same position as them, so I don't know where yeah. he comes from. I mean, the fact that Fabian Delph got called up in, in the, the first, first place. place yeah. Like, sure. what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, he's all right, but hasn't played. No, it made me angry. And it's going to be good when um, Wan-Bissaka chooses to represent Congo. So <laughs> it will just be the Wilfred Zaha situation again. Wan-Bissaka is criminally underrated, man. And I know we've talked about this before, but like, he's genuinely one of the best defenders in the world, full stop, regardless of age. And no one's talking about it. That's it. It's because though he's he's a defender, as in he actually defends. Yeah, he, exactly. And that. doesn't and he plays for Palace. Yeah, and doesn't That's necessarily yeah. sort of bomb forward like the modern fullback might. He defends. Although he is good going forward. Like he gets me a ton of fantasy points. He puts in good crosses. He creates a lot of chances, well above the average in the league for a defender. Yeah, and chances but created. He's not the sort of bombing forward wing back we've been used to lately. That's all, and he, but he's an unbelievable defender. But that's why he doesn't get. Yeah, so much nobody gets him. past him. Yeah, I'm sure Chuck knows like the more specific stats on this, but I think I think I saw something the other day that tackles this season. He's had a 99.79 percent success rate. His yeah. underlying stats for defensively are unbelievable. He's been beaten, I think, seven times. That's mad. I think that's all it is. Ridiculous. And it's like seven different players once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. I would love to watch just like a training match of him versus Hazard. Because mm. I feel like Hazard could probably like, even if you're one of the best defenders, pure defenders in the world, could probably get past him. But it would be a good battle. Like, I would really like to see that. Palace play Chelsea soon again, don't they? Uh, that game's still to happen this season. So you get it then. Unless Hazard's, you know, just... Doesn't fancy it that week. Nah, he's had enough. Yeah, but it's tough in like a full game because, you know, Hazard especially moves around a lot and is a bit of a free roaming left winger when he even plays left wing in the first place, which I think the last time we played you guys, Hazard was playing in the middle, so they didn't get to match up. So we'll see. But like, I, I mean, like just specifically the two of them just like over and over again, try to dribble past me, try to dribble past me. That would be fascinating to watch. We need your all star game and your. Yes. Oh, oh so it needs to be a thing. Yeah, instead of a double game week, let's get a All Star game. What that counts for FPL points? Oh, how would that work for FPL points? I guess it wouldn't. <laughs> no. Mini camp, like a mini camp bonus week. It's like that round in Street Fighter where you just got to beat up the guy's car. It's like that. Oh, I love that round. I was so good at it. We can make it a thing. God damn it! And I'm really angry, and I don't like Gareth Southgate anymore, and I don't care about the England team, and Harry Maguire can fuck off. So. <laughs> Long gone are the days of it's coming home, huh? <laughs> yeah, very no, much so. It's going to Congo. Remember that? Remember, remember the the happiness that you guys felt for a day there? Yeah. Memories uh, in the cover. <laughs> good times. Good times. Great times. Women's World Cup this year. Come on. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. The She Believes Cup. Fuck you, America. <laughs> Boom. England. Yes, we're going to win. <laughs> is it coming home? It's coming, coming home. home. Okay. It's coming home. And the good thing is it will really piss off all the angry white men because it will be the women that bring it home. <laughs> yeah. Love that. And then they will get angry because Alex Scott's on Match of the Day talking about it. Yeah, with their informed and opinions. Pauline's will shout over And it. research. <laughs> yeah, how dare she? How dare she have decent insight into games? Yeah. <laughs> how very dare she be educated and literate? The nerve of some people. Outrageous. Unbelievable. Give me Paul Ince and Michael Owen any day. 
like match of the day too the other day was it match of the day? anyway had like um Gabby Gabby Logan presenting Gabby Logan Alex, Dion Alex Dublin Scott, Alex and Dion Scott. Dublin who wasn't a cock like you know was sort of and it was a good show you know D- didn't sort of mm. talk down to her but and was like it was great yeah I mean, at one point, Dion Dublin did stop and start talking about how they could renovate the studio but, yeah. um, <laughs> on the budget, and that bit was a bit weird. But other than that, the football analysis was really good. We are in no position to have a go at someone for going off piece a little bit. We are if they're on the BBC, Ian. That's true. We're not on the BBC. <laughs> well, that much is clear. <laughs> Can't see that one happening. But funny how that works when they get like insightful and level-headed human beings to talk about analysis... Yeah. And then it comes out being good quality. Yeah, <laughs> funny that. All right, well, that'll do it for news this week. Not much happened of any interest in the Premier League. Uh, Chelsea no. lost, but we did say that was going to happen. They struggle at Goodison. Same old, same old, sorry ball. Alonso played. The moment I saw Alonso, I was like, oh, we're going to definitely lose. I already thought we were going to lose. Now we're definitely going to lose. Yeah. And we did. So, you know, kind of yeah. just write that off. <laughs> West Ham pissed off every fantasy football manager out there and they yes. concede three goals to Huddersfield. Unbelievable. Huddersfield, who scored 15 goals in the league all season. Do three of them in one game. 20%. Maths. Maths. 20% increase. Stats. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Well, 25% increase. They've scored 20%. How are you going to get. How, how does Javier Hernandez, who's about four foot nothing, win two headers? <laughs> Yeah, they really let him back into that, didn't they? Oh, Jeez. Jan Siever was seething. I also like that his name his name sounds like C-word, and um, I enjoy that every time. It also sounds like Sir Davos Seaworth for your Game of Thrones fans. Uh, sorry, my brain is like fully occupied by Game of Thrones right now, because we have been going back and rewatching it. Yeah. Um, we started 10 days ago, and we are done with season four. <laughs> Jeez. Just get a proper job. <laughs> I've been working late too, man. It's been like full days. Ooh, I finished work at four. <laughs> <laughs> that is a strong effort. I'm rewatching the last season, but I can't. I can't be bothered to go through all of it. That's what happens when you don't have kids, Ian. You just well, yeah. You go. Yeah. I'm going to do something now, and you do it. Yep. That is how it goes. We're also rewatching all the Marvel movies. But anyway, let's get back to the football. <laughs> how are you doing both? How do you do both of those things? What do you mean? Your life is a mystery. My life is fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> I love my life so much. Uh, Chelsea nil Everton 2. I just had to say something to bring you down. I can't see anyone that happy. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Good man, Ian. Yep. Uh, uh, Liverpool 2, Fulham 1. That has a title race implications. Um, in terms of looking at the table now, that puts Liverpool back at the top by two points, although they have a game in hand. How will that go for the next few weeks? Will they be able to handle staying in first place, or are they going to drop back down and drop those points despite the game in hand? I think it's going to be tit for tat every week now. I think you're going to see back him, and forth. Yeah, I think you're going to see him flip flopping. And it could, I think it's going to end really tight now. I think Liverpool, that felt like a bullet dodged against Fulham. It did. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, and it, you know, th- that sort of thing does happen, doesn't it? When teams win tight championships. So it, I really don't know how it's going to go. I, I can see them flip flopping for the rest, rest of the season yeah. and ending very tight. Mm, yeah, there's still, you know, there's still some tough games to go. I mean, Liverpool notably have Tottenham next. Which obviously Tottenham haven't. It would be a tough game, but Tottenham haven't been in the best form. But having a little bit of a break, you don't never know how they're going to come back from that. They might be a bit more organised. But City have got a pretty decent run in, and they've got Fulham next, and a few other games to catch up. So, yeah, I think it's 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 great that it's carrying on. Yeah, I think it's going to come down right to the wire. So it is exciting to see. Um, in terms of the like table implications of the other matches, the only other sort of notable thing towards the top is that Chelsea had that was Chelsea's game in hand um if they had won they would have been one point behind Spurs in third so right in there like level on level with Arsenal one point behind Spurs now they stay four points behind Spurs three points behind Arsenal and very much the those teams are the ones in the driver's seat yeah for third and fourth place um which is super super annoying yeah there's only four points now between sixth and third like Tottenham's capitulation is gone full complete yeah yeah like one point in four games in the league jeez no good i mean 
even Chelsea got seven in that time. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh my God, we didn't talk about this. Did you see? I tweeted you, Chuck. Uh, the table. Actually, I think I tweeted this from the main account. If the season had started on January 1st, so just 2019, Chelsea would be in 13th place, level on points, and behind on goal difference with Crystal Palace. I'll take it. <laughs> I realized my reaction was inaudible for far too long. <laughs> yeah, he just put his arms up, everybody. <laughs> 13th fucking place. Also, you guys are pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's two spots above where we are. It's just that relative, it seems better because Chelsea's drop is much worse. We move up two places, you drop down seven. Yeah. It's not, it's not good. We are garbage. No, we've lost four of our last five away games. It's not good. Not good. It's all right, Cardiff, next. That's what you need. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to lose to Cardiff. It's going to oh. suck. Oh, boy. Anything else major, though, with the Premier League do you guys want to touch on, or can we move on to the other competitions? Because there are more interesting stuff going on in other competitions, I think. Nah, nah, all boring. Nah, don't want to talk about FA Cup. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna. So, in no. the FA Cup, <laughs> the wanna. semifinals have been sorted out. We have Man City no, playing haven't. Brighton, yep, no. and we have Watford <laughs> playing Wolves. No. Watford came through... Uh, who did Watford beat? I can't Don't know. remember. No one. They got a bye. <laughs> got a bye. <laughs> they got a bye. <laughs> Chuck, any thoughts on Palace getting knocked out by Watford? Uh, well, we scored one more goal than I thought we would, but we have played Watford three times this season, and we have lost 2-1 three times. Is it? Bloody hell. Yeah. It's... They're the same old garbage, really. And so, for you know, for a team like us now, that just means the season's kind of over because it's, you know, you've got nothing else really to play for. You're not going to make that good progress up the league um, because we're kind of too far behind now and still looking over our shoulders-ish because um, we're only five points clear. But it's just, yeah, indicative of the whole season, really, that there was so much potential there and a great chance for a, a great year um, with so many kind of, apart from Man City, obviously, um, a good opportunity for for clubs like us, Brighton, Watford, Wolves, as they have done to to get to the semi-finals, and you know, one of them will be in the final. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a pretty even match between the two teams, one point four and one point two on XG. So they just narrowly edged you, but that's not a significant enough amount to matter. Mm. No, it wasn't. But it was just it was a couple of defensive mistakes. I mean, Palace were in the game for a long time, yeah. and the the problem is that after we scored the goal to to make it level again, we were on top for ages, and it was just the same thing that happens all season in the league is that we don't use that momentum to then kick off, kick on, and see see games out, or you know bring on subs to sustain that or whatever. You know, Watford see what's going on, they bring on Andre Gray, and lo and behold, he scores the goal, as we said before. Uh, what game was it? Ages ago with Everton, I think, when they brought on the two players. It was Cenk Tosin and someone else um, that Palace were linked with, Adam Ola Lookman. And, you know, they make the difference. So we're just never proactive with any substitutions or any game yeah. plans. We're just far too reactive. And you've been saying that all season long, that it's, you know, the substitutions, yeah, it's, the changes, it's exactly and all that. that. And, yeah, and you cannot say it's no talent on the bench because we've got the most talented squad we've ever had. And, and Benteke also. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bastard. Um, yeah, and it's just it, it's one of those things where I I just think now it's we've wasted the best years of kind of too many players' careers potentially by not performing to our ability. Yeah, like everyone says it all the time, but it doesn't make it easier. They're like Palace shouldn't be in fourteenth. No, no, we should no, be no. doing we should be doing the same things as sort of you know, Wolves this season or Watford or West Ham. Like, there's no reason why we couldn't. Yeah, you guys should be around 7th, I think. Yeah. 7th to 9th, and, and you know, somewhere in there. And and I can tell that because of the amount of people that did the Predictor League and I can see where you put Palace and you all pretty much agree with me. So, you <laughs> bastards. Um, <laughs> you stupid, stupid people <laughs> who know nothing of football um, and the pain this club causes. Um Yeah, I mean, I, I do want to make it a point to say full credit to Watford because they did play well. It wasn't like a bad beat or anything, and they took advantage of their chances, nah. and they're you know that's how cup results go. Yeah, it's exactly that. It was that the two chances really fell to Watford, two kind of clear ones, and they they nailed them. Yeah, um, Guaita can't deal with a cross or a corner or a set piece; it's horrendous. 
Um, he just kind of flaps in the air and oh, the guy's an amazing shot stopper, but yeah, heart in mouth every time a ball comes in. Uh, but yeah. What do yeah. you what do you look for for the rest of the season then? You're saying like it's basically done. They're out of the cup. There's not much left to do in the table. What would be like insofar as you have a target or a goal or something that could potentially make you at least a little happy over the rest of the season? Do you just want to see Juan nah, Bissaka doing done well? That's it, really. You just don't care anymore. You're just like fully checked out on the season. Yeah, just not getting relegated. That's it. Yeah, right, well, you're less than one. Three more on wins, that, so. and that's it. Let's move on then to the other results in the FA Cup. We had Millwall Brighton going to penalty kicks. Chuck, your beloved Brighton coming through on that. So are you happy <laughs> to see them in the semifinals or uh the last set <laughs> he's giving me daggers? <laughs> well, you, your old man uh, Glenn Murray did his best to sabotage it in the shootout, didn't he? Yeah. Skillfully putting it onto the crossbar. Uh just oh god, if Brighton get to the five if Brighton win the FA Cup, uh I'll probably just kill myself. <laughs> Oh, oh my god okay well moving on then i don't want to keep pushing that too far <laughs> uh we had wolves two manchester united one gentlemen Called wolves it. knocked out man united and it was thoroughly deserved because united only put up 0.5 xg so you know anytime wow. you put up 0.5 in a knockout match of a cup then you know you're probably going out yeah, yeah, and there's already people saying that Ole shouldn't now shouldn't get the job, and bye. Yeah, that's a couple of bad results from them. One that they deserved, that's this one, and then the other <laughs> against Arsenal. Literally a couple, that's the thing, like, literally a couple yeah. out of 15, 16 games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's harsh, it's harsh, but, you know, them's the breaks in 2019. Do we see United slide? Do they kind of fall out of the top four race now? Do Have we lost their momentum, or are they going to come back now that Lukaku's injured and Rashford can go back to playing in the middle? Yeah, that might be pivotal, to be honest. Because Honestly, blessing in disguise, probably, for me. It's weird, though, isn't it? I mean, I know Lukaku sort of has been in all right form, scored a couple of braces, and but the team looks better with Rashford in the middle. But people are so quick to jump on Lukaku as well. Yeah, they are. Like, I wonder why. Like, Rashford is seen as an absolute darling, and, you know, then Lukaku scores, I don't know, like seven goals in five games, has, like, one or two off games and that's it he's shit again yeah like, yeah yeah people do want to hate him crazy the double standards honestly and this is going to sound like the most biased thing ever but i think it's the chelsea connection i think people just fundamentally hate players that have been associated with the chelsea in any significant way and so he just has the chelsea stink on him because people want to hate chelsea players i think that can be an element but i think it's more it's it's price tag versus academy oh yeah as well that's true yeah 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 you know, Rashford will always be one of their own or whatever, whereas right. Lukaku is like, we spent all this money on you, what are you doing? Yeah, although it is the media at large too, like it's not just United fans. But the the other sort of thing I can think of is that he's also played for a bunch of different teams, partially because we loaned him out, but like he played for West Brom, he played for us, we sold him to Everton, who then sold him to United. He's really young to have played on that many different teams. And so I think that probably I mean, gives off never, the impression. Did he even play for Chelsea? Yeah, he played I know for he us. he didn't score a goal for Chelsea. He played not a lot, but he played some. He did a, he did make senior team appearances for us. So to have been on that many teams at such a young age, that probably, like, even if it subconsciously gives off the impression of him being like a mercenary, um, which is the other thing that people hate, which is really does go hand in hand with the Chelsea thing because all Chelsea players are mercenaries. He doesn't really play the media game very much as well. He's not like a Pogba Instagrammer or whatever. Yeah. Is he? he doesn't yeah. really sort of do any of that. So, But bias aside, I think for me, they just tactically – he fucks up their system. They yeah. look much better. Like, he probably is better than Rashford, I think, in absolute. And he yeah. can certainly score goals. But we've talked a lot about, like, knock-on effects. And, like, this player is good independently. But, like, how does that affect all the players around him? I think Rashford just fits more harmoniously with the rest of the squad. Yeah, so United get knocked out. United have lost two games in a row. And we'll see what happens. But I think, yeah, I do think Rashford going back to the middle is probably going to be good for them. I mean, what about Wolves' this season? I mean, it's absolutely amazing. The The league position is incredible for a promoted club, especially a club like Wolves that have been... I know they've spent, obviously, they've spent a lot of money. Blah, blah, yeah, blah, but, but Fulham spent the second most of anybody, and look where they are. Exactly. I mean, you know, Wolves have traditionally been one of them sort of like underachieving yo-yo clubs in this country. 
Yeah. And the the season they've had has been unbelievable and Yeah, and it's been it's been deserved definitely. as well. It has it hasn't been like it's been a series of flukes that have got them there. It's been real graft no, and they've been beating big six teams or certainly giving them good games, if not beating them. I mean the absolutely unbelievable season. Yeah. They remind me of Iceland. Um not so much in terms of their tactical style. The supermarket. <laughs> yeah. Always in freezers. <laughs> Um, they play to each other's strengths and they move as a unit and they are greater than the sum of their parts. And Ma- Matt Doherty has been a revelation this year, man. Like so good. Goddamn fantasy gold that I've never owned. Yeah. Oh no, really? You never owned him? Nah, I had like Ryan Bennett. So, you know, I get like offshoots yeah, the, the whole same. time. <laughs> it's cheap enough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're, you're ready. And we should, we should spare a moment to say good, good on sp- uh, Wolves. It's funny because you just reminded me that they had been promoted. I forgot that they got promoted this year. That's yeah, how good they've it's been. It's really easy to forget that. I mean, the the performances they've put in, not shying away from like actually playing big six teams and not just trying to shut up shop. Yeah. It's been tactically been really impressive. Yeah, absolutely. They've played, it's harsh to say, I think, but they've played well above their level. Or let's, yeah. I think maybe the better way to phrase that is that they've gotten every last drop out of their talent. Yeah. Do you think this could be like their Leicester season though? Because Leicester had that year where obviously, you know, everyone knows they won the league and they caught everyone by surprise and no one knew what they were about. But then after that, that was just, everyone did know and it it kind Um, of, the team got ripped apart a bit. Do you wonder if that could happen with Wolves this year? No, I don't because I'm pretty sure City or Liverpool are going to win the title. I don't see Wolves climbing up the ranks at this point. You know what I mean. <laughs> you dick chicken. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It depends on if they keep all their players, right? Like, I could definitely see teams coming in for Matt Doherty. Doherty? 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 Yeah. Oh, let's not do that. There's nothing more boring than a podcast talking about how to pronounce fucking a player's name. Who cares? Everyone knows who we mean. Doherty. I'm leaving that in. Calling out other podcasts. Don't fucking do that. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's leave that in. <laughs> he has been very good. And I could see other teams coming in for him. I could see teams coming in for Jimenez. Jimenez, yep. Jimenez, good. Jimenez. <laughs> Jimenez bit. Joe Tor. Um, <laughs> he's been good. But I think if they can keep their players, they'll probably be at about this place next year. Does it help that they've not had like that one talisman as well? Yeah. Like, do- does that help them not get figured out? You know, Chelsea thing seems to have been shut down Jorginho, job done. You know, Salah's been off the boil, and that's what a lot of people have been talking about. I know Liverpool has still been winning in that, but yeah. you know, is it a case if there's no sort of one one player that runs everything? So maybe they maybe they can continue it a little bit longer. I I agree. I think they will continue it. I'm mean, obviously Chuck. There's always the chance that they will. Like you know, that's not like a crazy thing to throw out there. It's certainly a reasonable question to ask, but my gut tells me, which means that it's almost certainly going to go the other way, mm. that they are going to be able to maintain their level. <laughs> but it's just it's just looking at the table now, like, you know, Wolves, you know, being in seventh is incredibly impressive, but, you know, there's only four points between them and 11th. Like, it, they, they aren't as ahead as maybe we all think they are. Yeah. There's a big gap between Chelsea and Wolves, isn't it? Yeah, but, 13 yeah. points. Yeah. Like... But I mean, and there probably will be a little bit of regression to the mean, but... But if they finish in that 7 to 11 range, because there's a bunch of teams right there, and I think, like, if they happen to finish 10th instead of 7th, but it's only by a couple of points, that's pretty much equally successful. Yeah. I don't think it's a massive difference. So I think they are going to be at that same, like, you know, who's there? Watford, Leicester, West Ham should be, or are. Wolves will be there next year. Palace should be in that conversation, and maybe will be next year. We'll see. I, I don't see them falling off from that group towards the relegation scrap. I'm not, I'm not worried about them being in a relegation scrap next year. What are, what are the jumps like prize money wise, place to place? Like, is it actually significant or fourth is really significant? Fourth is worth a hundred million pounds. But that's because Champions League money comes because of the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh right, yeah. No, I'm just talking like Premier League prize money. As in, is it actually significant that they've they're going to finish? above like significantly above what might have been more traditionally you'd have thought of their rivals like finishing in your 16th 17th like are they is it going to be money where they can actually use it and establish themselves i think it's a couple of million a position so it's not right because i remember the year the year when all the big money changed i think bottom was 60 million 
and then right. it, it went up in about two million a time. So obviously, yeah. the because it's just, the same for each place, isn't it? It goes up. It goes down by about two million per position. Um, but the much much bigger driver of their financial success is how many games get put on TV. Um, so for example, just looking at, I just googled an article really quickly, and from last year, the team that finished in third actually made the most money by a pretty wide margin because they were on TV the most. So it's probably better to be exciting and finish in 11th than to be boring but finish in 7th. So it's not going to help establish them any more than finishing 12th would. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a couple million pounds were shrugging it off, but, you know, that's not obviously... I mean, nothing. other than maybe being able to attract better players, I don't know, maybe. I mean, maybe by not being in a relegation scrap. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Although I don't know that they want to be bringing players in anyway, right? Like... No, no, true. They don't want to mess up that balance. It reminds me of Sweden, actually. When Sweden lost Zlatan, we spent a lot of time in the world when we first did this podcast being like they would be worse with Zlatan in there, even though he's obviously better than anybody in their squad. So you don't want to bring in too big of a fish because then it fucks up the whole pond. All right. And then the last FA Cup game is Swansea City 2, Manchester City 3. The winning goal was questionable shall we say yeah it's it's been definitely been one of those weeks where var critics have come out or or you know and and in the right way i think i just think this backward thing of the fa cup where some of the games have it and some don't is yeah that's insane they should either have it in every match or not at all yep the fa cup's supposed to be this ultimate competition of like the leveler like you you know you're potentially your sort of sunday league pub team who go in in the FA Cup qualifiers or whatever can win it. So just don't have VAR. Just don't have VAR in the FA Cup. It's one competition. Yeah, and, just and don't have the, it. the FA Cup does sort of seem to pride itself on tradition and being traditional. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, all, it all seems to go in line with that. So yeah, yeah, just don't have it. You can't pick and choose where, where you get into a situation where if this game had been played at a different ground, it would have ended differently. Absolutely. You, you can't have that. Yeah, or just have it from like the semi-final onward so it's, you know, neutral ground, a different thing. Like, that's yeah. it. Yeah, like the cups, the matches at Wembley, sure, put it in because they're at Wembley anyway, so it's already different. Like, the, yeah. there's no longer a home team or an away team and all that sort of stuff. But that, for the record, that's not us saying that there shouldn't be VAR or that VAR is bad. We're still very much proponents of VAR. We're just saying in the FA Cup, if it's going to be used inconsistently, it's better to not have it at all. Agreed. Yeah. Um, but I don't want anyone out there to get us twisted in any way whatsoever. <laughs> Fucking VAR is great and better, and it makes the game better, and we are fully in support of VAR and will always be fully in support of VAR. So. Dave Mateo's spoiling for an argument about this one, isn't he? Yeah, he really is, because he has a beef with it because of what he's seen in the Australian. In the A-League, yeah. Yeah, but we've all got beef with If you've ever watched Australian football, then you've got beef with it. Like, it's... <laughs> well, and they're trying to, like, make goals from 40 yards count for five, right? Or <laughs> Oh, God, I can't believe we went off about that for so long, and it's not that sport. <laughs> Turned out to be bollocks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, City, though, in fairness to City, like, yes, that goal was, like, just should not have counted or whatever, but... The XG was 0 0.3 to 2.7. So I don't feel that bad about it. Yeah, but Swansea scored a bloody lovely oh, goal. Oh, Swansea's second goal. Oh, oh, if you've not seen that, that was that was Pep getting pepped right there. That was. Yeah. And it was the guy who, who did that ridiculous penalty uh, the week or like a few days before against West Brom or something where he kicked it and it went towards the corner flag. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was the same guy. Selena, I think his name is. He goes right. up and tries to take a penalty, but he's not watching the ball. He's watching the keeper. And he yes. fluffs it, and the ball goes like 90 degrees right. <laughs> I'd miss that. All oh, right, so he fluked the goal. Okay. Fair yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although, meanwhile, fucking Aguero scored despite slipping, and I think he hit it with his standing foot on the way down. Is Aguero going to do as Aguero does? Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so City like got lucky on the the VAR non call call situation, but you know two point seven to zero point three hard to really begrudge them going through there. They're heavy favorites now, right? Like four competitions. It's yeah, still on. It's very much on. Uh, to take it briefly to the other competitions, we don't normally cover this very much, but it is kind of getting towards the meteor portions of those competitions. Uh, City are in still the Champions League seven zero. 
against Schalke, 10-2 on aggregate, fucking destroying them. And they have Tottenham in the quarterfinals, gentlemen, an all-English quarterfinal in the Champions League. How are we feeling about that? City gon' do a dickin'. <laughs> yeah, Tottenham <laughs> thoroughly beating Dortmund, too. 4-0 on aggregate, 3-0, and then 1-0. I'm stunned that we're in a position of four English teams in the in the Yeah, uh, when, you, when you think not long ago, weren't England going to lose one of the positions? Yeah. yeah, we weren't far away, yeah. There was a few years there where Chelsea were the only team making deep runs and keeping the coefficient alive. Yeah. Against like two or three Italian teams and they were kind of pushing up towards the English coefficient. Yeah. And now all of a sudden it's, you know, no French teams are there. Um, are there any Italian teams to it? Yeah. Just Juve, right? Juve. Yeah. So to run through the matchups, since we're here anyway, Ajax plays Juve. Ajax <laughs> beating Real Madrid after playing, scoring 4-1 in the second leg. <laughs> oh, man. Everybody was happy about that. But Ajax gets to play Juve, so we have a Dutch team and an Italian team. Barcelona gets Manchester United, so that actually could be really interesting. Um, although Barca are heavy favorites there. I believe 3-1 to one in terms of the like the percentages according to 538. But that should be tasty, at least, seeing Pogba run at Barcelona's what's left of a midfield there. Should be interesting. Uh, Liverpool get Porto, so that's kind of the easiest draw. Um, Liverpool going through, beating Bayern, 3-1 aggregate, 0-0 after the first leg. So going to Bayern and winning 3-1, which is actually pretty impressive. And then uh, we already talked about Tottenham Man City. So those are the four quarterfinals. Do we think there will be two, three, one English teams in the semifinals? Um, at least one. <laughs> um, bold claim, Jack, bold. <laughs> yeah, I'm very out of my predictions. City and Liverpool should go through. There's a slim chance of Man United, but it's Barcelona. Yeah, and it's two legs. Maybe in one leg I could see United doing them, but over two legs quality usually does show. And then to even more briefly touch on the Europa League, there are still two English teams is that there. Still a so thing? it is. Is that still going on? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> um, Arsenal came back 3 0 after losing 3 1 in the first leg, and they go 4 3 on aggregate to go through. So a bit of a comeback for them. Everybody was laughing beforehand, and then they, of course, of course fucking. We're still laughing now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what point do Arsenal shift their focus from the league to actually trying to win the Europa League? That's definitely what Chelsea have done at this point. Emery's won it enough times with Sevilla. When Sevilla were dominating the Europa League for all those years, it was Emery that was in charge that then got him the move to PSG. Right, okay. I'm not sure I knew oh, that. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So he's, he's kind of, he's built for that competition. Yeah. The other English team being mine, Chelsea. Uh, 3-0 in the first leg, 5-0 in the second. Callum Hudson-Odoi and Ruben Loftus-Cheek looked fantastic from playing from the starting lineup, which is, you know, what everyone's been asking for. Did Ruben so... Loftus-Cheek <laughs> get called up to the England squad? No, because he's injured. Oh, for fuck. Well, not injured, injured, but like he still is recovering from a back injury thing. So, Actually, Southgate said part of the reason he called up Callum Hudson-Odoi is because Ruben isn't there. Um, and then in terms of the draw, Chelsea got... Prague, Slavia Prague in the quarterfinal. Yeah, Chelsea getting Prague. That's not quite as glamorous as Man United getting Barcelona, though, is it? No, not quite. And then also in terms of being on the easy side of the bracket, they get the winner of Benfica or Frankfurt, the winner of that match. I'm not assuming that Chelsea are going to win, but it is a favorable draw. Um, so, you know, just like England at the World Cup, Chelsea are looking at a pretty straightforward path to the final if they can not fucking shit the bed, which... It's Chelsea, so who knows? And then meanwhile, Arsenal got Napoli, which is the hardest possible draw you could get. And then on the same side as the two Spanish teams, Villarreal and Valencia. So that's not a great draw for Arsenal. Haha, <laughs> suck it, Adam. Um, <laughs> Chelsea-Arsenal final. Yeah, Chelsea-Arsenal oh, final. Imagine, imagine an all-English Europa and an all-English Champions League final. Oh, Kings of Europe. Oh. And then have Arsenal finish in fourth. And then, and have... No, but then none of them can win because of Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> get thrown out of Europe wholesale. <laughs> uh, my dream is that Arsenal play Chelsea in the final. Arsenal have fourth place, but if Chelsea win and the way other cup results have gone, and it's very much in the cards, us winning 
the Europa League would knock them out of next year's <laughs> Champions League, despite them being in fourth place. I was going to ask what would happen there. Yeah, would the would fourth place? Uh, it not... depends on if I think it would have to be fifth place winning the Champions League also. Right. Um, because you can't have six teams in the Champions League. So if fifth place wins the Champions League and sixth place wins the Europa, then fourth is not going to get to be miss out. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure that's what the scenario is. Root for chaos. <laughs> just uh, just tweet at Paul Carr. He'll have you all sorted for the root for chaos scenario. But that is very much what I'm rooting for. So. All right. Well, that does it for the football. So good fucking riddance. So let's move on to listener stuff. Yeah, listener stuff. So uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do that via Twitter. We are at Miles Offside Pod. We're on Facebook as Miles Offside. And you can email us if you've got something longer. <laughs> longer. <laughs> uh, Miles Offside Pod at gmail.com. Um, and also, we should mention the Patreon. So if you go onto patreon.com slash Miles Offside Pod, you can look at the various levels you could pledge at. There is extra content to be had. There's. Uh, my FPL mini pods, which has just been me railing against my ranking. Um, Oscar's nerdy newsstand, uh, which has been. What, what was your last one about? Uh, uh, the Avengers trailer. That's right. The Avengers like 15 trailer. minutes on the Avengers trailer. 15 minutes of you masturbating on the <laughs> Avengers trailer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, Chuck does various things, but his latest thing has been going through the games and giving you like a quick style, uh, quick fire match of the day type roundup. Yeah, and I promise I'll do it this week. <laughs> well, we've got, <laughs> got a bit of time now, haven't we, until the next one? Yeah. But um, more importantly, uh, one of our Patreons got in touch, uh, Johnny Werthers, and it allows me to bring back a feature that I've been really upset that we haven't done for the last few uh, last few weeks. Yeah. Respect. <laughs> for new listeners... Chuck and Oscar specifically are uh, obsessed with socks. I'm not obsessed with socks. It's just yeah, socks are great. I don't know. We've put an abnormal amount of thought into the idea of socks and the way that socks should be used. I don't know. We're obsessed with socks. I yeah, think that's obsessed. I think the inordinate amount of airtime we spent on the subject would show that there is a case to say we might be obsessed with socks. One of the Patreon levels is thirty dollars a month, and Chuck will curate you a box of socks. <laughs> A month's As, supply of socks, yes. A, a what? A, a month's a supply month of socks. Supply. At yeah. least 30 pairs, probably 31 pairs of socks. Of good quality socks. Yeah. So February, quid's in, three extra days. Unless it's a leap year, then you get two extra days. Obsessed with socks. Mm. Um, <laughs> so anyway, Johnny Werther says, when does the length of sock become a stocking? Um, uh, wait, is this one of those English things? What do you mean? Is it one of those English things? What are stockings to you guys? I'm wondering, because that question makes not really much sense to me at all. It's like the lady things. Lady things. Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 cool. Then it's not about length, right? Yeah. It's not about how long it is, it's about how you use it. Uh, Go on. I mean, right? <laughs> no, so like stockings are kind of see-through, yeah. and they're yeah. mostly for ladies to wear mm -hmm. under skirts and stuff. They're made of like a different material. Right? And they're very, very, very stretchy. Sometimes they're connected at the top. Whereas socks are just socks. Like they're cotton <laughs> or sometimes like a polyester blend. Yeah, socks cannot be attached. That just doesn't work. You no, can't... socks can't be attached that's for sure. Tr that's trousers. I'm pretty sure that's trousers. <laughs> trousers. Um, <laughs> above the knee? Is it above the... It's got to be above the knee. You can have socks that are above the knee as long as they're still made of sock material. Nah, because that's a stocking then. That would be a stocking. You know, like, it's like stockings because you, you, you hang a stocking above... Oh, now we're thinking, yeah, Christmas, isn't it? Christmas, yeah. Christmas stocking is a whole different thing. Yeah, but it's still a stocking. So at what point does a sock become a Christmas stocking? Because they're just, like, massive. But that's more girth rather than length. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, we're, I think we should rule out Christmas stockings for now because that's, like, a separate thing. No one actually wears those. Those are more for display than for use. It, a, a stocking has to go at least one-third of the way up the thigh. That's, that's my ruling. One-third. You're just checking yours. Yeah, he's like one third. It's just right where my dick ends. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> no, no, no. One third from the knee, not one third from the. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have to get that out in front of you on Google, did I? No, no, no that's that's a different kind of hangout. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. 
Look, I could, I would, I agree that length does play a factor here. Like stockings have to be above the knee. I don't necessarily know that it's a third of the leg. I haven't, you know, considered that much in terms of the percentages and fractions that go into it, but definitely <laughs> above the knee. Fine. But I do think that you can have socks that come above the knee. Nah, that's just weird. Socks, like the socks that athletes wear, like soccer players or football players, those come up above the knee. Nah, I don't like it. And they're still socks. No one would be like, oh, those are football stockings. Well, no, they more cover the knee. I think stocking is about the material. Where do you stand on, like, thermal long johns? Have you ever worn anything like that? I mean, Yes. <laughs> oh, I love a thermal long john, yeah, for sure. Good. Yes, mm-hmm. I thought I was going to get roundly lambasted there, but we've had a pretty mild <laughs> winter. I haven't been able to bang out the thermal long johns, but Oscar, your weather's been pretty bad. Has it been long john weather? Uh, no, I mean, it's been bad, but like not comparative to other winters. We had like a couple of really, really, really freezing days, um, but our winters are way worse than you guys. So, yeah, you know, it yeah. being zero degrees or single digits Fahrenheit, which would be like negative 20. Loads. Negative loads. Yeah. Yeah. I think negative 20 Celsius um, is not like so cold that I want to die. Long johns with feet though or without? Because I I don't think I've ever had long johns with feet. Oh no, I've not done them with feet. No. 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 I don't even know what that is. That would be if you had a onesie and then cut off the top. So it's a half C. (laughs) A half C. (laughs) Yeah. That should actually, someone should invent that. Patent pending. (laughs) You can't just say patent pending. That's not how it works. I said patent pending. Nope. (laughs) Copyright. Trademark. <laughs> it, it just feels like you come up with socks that are attached. They're, they're like mittens for your feet. Yeah, like... um. That's what a sock is, because you don't have fingers, do you? I always think of mittens as being connected by a bit of material, but you're right, the the main thing of a mitten is that it's not got fingers, yeah. Yeah, because otherwise it's gloves, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Wait, are your mittens attached like handcuffs? No, no, saying? like... Yeah, like... yeah, yeah, you can't actually <laughs> use your hands. You just... <laughs> no. no, 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 like um, like kids, when they're really young, they might have like a bit of material that runs up the arm, across the shoulder, down the other arm, so as they don't like, and it's in the coat. What? That is not a thing over here. Yeah, so it'll be like a big bit of string that goes all the way around, and then kids can't lose their mittens. No, our, like a lot of our mittens attach to the coat. But So these kids are wearing like... Full, basically, body armor, like up their arm and around no, the back. No, no, it's literally, it's a thread, a string, a string of wool connects one mitten to that another. That sounds really uncomfortable. No. It feels like your shirt's bunched up in the wrong fucking place. No, it's one bit of, like he says, it's a thread. We're not talking about, like... It's not a belt. Like, how big of a thread? Like a like a headphone wire? Like, like knitting wool. Like, if you were to get wool and you saw, like, someone knitting, like, that thick. I don't know, like a like two mil? I don't know, three mil? <laughs> like a yarn? Like a... Yeah, yeah. Right, that still sounds uncomfortable. Jesus. Are you like the princess and the pea or something? He's very sensitive. Apparently. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> Blimey. I also don't know what the princess and the pea is, but sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> oh, for... Jesus Christ, right. Oh, yeah. good. Okay. No, but no, I I want socks that attach to, like, the butt, that are like pants socks. So basically, lady stockings, but made of sock material. And those would not be stockings, for the record, even though they come all the way up to the butt. They would still be socks. They would just be, like, weird half seas socks. What are chaps? Arthless. Chaps are not <laughs> any of that. <laughs> okay. Chaps are for cowboys? Are you actually asking or... <laughs> sort of. I just think this is a good place to just ask questions that I'm not sure I've ever known the answer to. You've always wondered what chaps are, so now I, it's your I time. I find it weird that you wear a pair of trousers over your trousers to stop you wearing out your trousers. Oh, it's a protective thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like leather that goes on the outside of your pants for cowboys for cowboy-related reasons. I think I do know about chaps. I mix the village people today. I think I know about chaps. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to know how my career is going, I mix the village people at work today. Like the grey village people. <laughs> Only one of them was original. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> which one? Lead singer. Uh, the, the the cop. Lead singer. As if I know which one the lead I singer is. I don't know. Is. The fucking the cop. <laughs> is he the one that does Y? The one that does M? The one that does... I don't know. They did a medley. <laughs> did they do Macho Man? Yeah. Yeah, that's the best. Nice. That's a good one. That's definitely better than YMCA. Absolutely. Do you guys even know what the YMCA is over there? Or is oh, that just like weird random letters? Sake. Yeah, no, we do know what 
Young I, I, I take nothing no, for fair, granted, Charles. Fair. Cock agency. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a million miles away, probably. There's a YMCA across the road from me. It stands for it's Young Man's Christian Association. That one. There you go. Okay. Um, we've got another another patron coming in with a question. Carmen. Now, this is sort of... We, we've talked about this before, but she gets specific. And... Right. So the the question she's put is, what superpower would you like to have? And then listed three. But I think it's obvious which one. So I think really we just take each one and talk about its merits. Okay? Okay. So the first one she, she says is, teleport everywhere you want, which is obviously Oscar's favourite, but you arrive naked. That's that's Oscar's favourite as well. So that's double <laughs> yeah. tick for Oscar. Still, Still on happy that. with that. Yeah. <laughs> Just teleport to somewhere where there's clothes. Yeah. And then walk the rest of the way. <laughs> okay. Like, I can still be in Paris now, and then I go to a clothes shop and buy some clothes. But then the problem is, is then you then you live, have to live, like, a life of crime. Nah, just buy clothes everywhere you go. Just always wear, like, shitty, cheap, disposable clothes. What bloody money tree do you have in your house? <laughs> just buy clothes I don't know about you guys, you but you could go to, like, a pharmacy here and buy, like pants and a shirt for a total of 50 cents basically like uh, disposable suppose, clothes hang on hang on hang on i've seen through this because you could teleport with a suitcase yeah are you allowed to take things with you and you just you show up naked but you could be holding something in your hand or is it like a terminator situation where, where you travel you naked are the only thing that can teleport yeah well i guess to, to increase the jeopardy you should say you are the only thing you can't even bring your wallet how could the terminator if you can't take anything with you, how did the Terminator keep its skin when it teleported? Because the skin is organic material, and they're allowed to take organic material. It's not; it. it's just inorganic stuff that is on the outside. The skeleton is encased by organic material, but so then, it's protected. But they're not attached, so wouldn't... Yeah, because then the skeleton's in inorganic material. Yeah, but it's encased fully by organic material, so it, it's So sort what of you're saying is, is if you encase something fully in your skin, then you could time travel so why didn't they just stick like guns up their butt <laughs> they did in three <laughs> i mean not up the butt but she did have that arm that turned into a gun and what if the terminator had a pair of mittens that were attached by a thread? <laughs> <laughs> would they also teleport um would never been able to run as fast yeah could it get the arms round robert patrick with that weird run that terrified everyone yeah, that then Tom Cruise saw and was like, uh-huh, that's the right way to run. I'm going to run that way from now on. <laughs> this is running. Um, if we were in this world and you had this naked teleport power, I mean, like, you'd be super famous for that. So... Yeah, also that. So you'd just... Would you be more famous for being naked or, fa or for teleporting? Well, the teleporting thing as well. But what I'm saying is you'd teleport somewhere and go, yeah, I did the naked thing, someone give me some clothes. Like, everyone would know you. Yeah, that's true. Then you could use the power of celebrity. Your level of fame would just be, you know, yeah, yeah, I know, I'm turning up naked again. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah. Okay, so um, the next superpower was, I mean, this isn't, this is awful. Um, eat all you can <laughs> without getting fat, but it's only broccoli you can eat. I mean, that's isn't just... That, can't, can't that happen anyway? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, essentially that's You can just... eat all the broccoli you want and not get fat. But I'm not like... eating broccoli, yeah. No. I don't... Is that the one that burns more calories than it takes I think that's to supposed to be celery, but... That's celery. That yeah. feels that's like also a lie. A lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, celery tastes like garbage. Yeah. Okay, and the other, the last one was uh, read everybody's mind, but not Pep Guardiola's. I mean... Ooh, that is a good one. That's a weird condition. That is a weird condition. Yeah, As I don't know why. You can't read the mind of someone you've never met. <laughs> As a fancy football player, that would annoy me, though. I, I, out of any manager, I want to know what he's thinking. So your immediate thought to having <laughs> the power to read people's minds mm -hmm. is, how can I use that for FPL? To win FPL. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. No, I just... I, I took the caveat and thought, why... Why would yeah, I? Yeah, that's mostly just the power to read people's minds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, is it just me or is it closer than you would have otherwise thought? Teleporting, but you have to be naked versus reading people's minds? Like, I'm obviously all in favor of the teleporting. Yeah. But the naked thing does make it significantly worse. Yeah. Because you now, Chuck said, you can't have a wallet. I didn't think of that. Or was that Ian that yeah, said that? Yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Sorry. Oh. You're all the same to me. White English guys. Who cares? True. <laughs> um, that does change things, right? Like not having a wallet, you can't just go and buy clothes because you don't even have that. Mm-hmm. You're just a naked guy. You're a crazy naked guy. And you can keep teleporting away from the police or whatever, but like you would have to steal the clothes or go the famous route. Yeah. It's just an awkward situation, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the famous people can still get arrested, Oscar. Not if you can read minds, you can't get arrested. Yeah, but you can't teleport and read minds. You can still get... What do you mean? You can still get arrested if you read someone's mind. No, because you read their mind and they're about to say you're arrested and you're like, "Uh uh-uh, can't do it. Jinxed. (laughs) You say it at the same time as them and then you say jinx and then they can't arrest you. Off-missed legal loophole. The jinx. Yeah, of course. If you watch the jinx, that's old, an old crime thing, but... I'm always wary now of going off on one about crime documentaries, but... Yeah, I was about to say, does an old man get jerked off by his neighbour? <laughs> but have you seen The Jinx? No. No. Oh, The Jinx is so good. So good. Is that like The Slap? What's The Slap? Oh, you guys haven't seen The Slap? Oh, there's our episode preview with no context. It's an entire show based around the premise in the first episode. There's a They're like at a kid's birthday party. And some kid is being really shitty, and so a dad just hits him really hard across the face, open palm, but it's not his own kid. <laughs> and then from there, like, all sorts of drama ensues. Oh, I gotta send you guys the fucking trailer for this. It's so good. But it's just a guy, and it's, um, I think it was based on an English thing, or it was based on something else first. But the American version of it was the guy who plays Spock in the Star Trek movies, okay. slash was a Siler on Heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is the one that does the slap. And then the trailer for the show is like, yeah, so I slapped him. But it wasn't your kid. And it's like, <laughs> what the just fuck? craziness. And I think that like by the time you get to the end of the show, like someone got murdered. Because like just a chain of events gets yeah. set off by this slap. Yeah. Okay, I need to watch this. But no, the Jinx is great if you get a chance to watch that. And it's got a great little twist ending that involves like sort of tangentially the sound engineer doing the documentary. It's fucking brilliant. Huh. Yeah. Love it. Watch the jinx. Um, anyway, um, question-wise, Oscar, you came in with another one, which I was a little bit yeah, confused. Yeah, I've been about. submitting questions for weeks, but you just ignored them. Well, and then because you're on yeah. the podcast. I know. I just, I'm a dick, so I just was like, I'll post stupid questions when they ask for questions. Yeah, I've sort of but just I been glossing been over them. I guess the last couple of weeks. <laughs> I'll just, yeah, I've put the last few in. So I was a little bit confused with it, though. What's the best way to eat popcorn? In your face. Yeah, like, do you put just salt, just butter, oh, right. cheddar popcorn, caramel popcorn? I thought you meant popcorn. physically eat it. I'm like, well, I'm not sticking out my ass. I mean... Are oh, you not? Sorry, no, no, no. Like, the best, like, flavor <laughs> of popcorn. Right. Um, okay. Gotcha. Chocolate covered. You know, there's a lot of kettle corn. Well, popcorn's now, like, the healthy snack, isn't it? As healthy as it can be coated oh, in yeah. salt and sugar. So, that's obviously everywhere with the different flavors. Um... We used to, when I used to run my bar um, and we had like film nights and stuff and get the popcorn machine on, we used to make this sriracha butter that was amazing and put Ooh, that on the top really? of everything. Yeah. You get liquid butter, oh, yeah. liquid butter substitute and uh, mix yeah, that okay. with, with hot sauce and uh, put a little bit of chili mm. oil in there. Bam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I've never, been, nice. I've never been one for savory popcorn, but that sounds good. Yeah. It's like crack. Nice. What about you, Ian? What's your preferred popcorn consumption? See, I'm, if I'm going to cinema, then I'm sweet. But um, they sell sweet popcorn at the cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have it salty or sweet. Get mix it up, mate. A bit of half and half. What does sweet mean? Like coated in sugar? Literally just sugar on it? <laughs> yeah. But like, oh. like a sugar glaze, not like yeah. you just sprinkled sugar. It's kind of, I don't know, toffee popcorn, but not. Yeah, not actual as, toffee, but I love as toffee much popcorn. Of a crust that's like, yeah, toffee Interesting, popcorn I don't good. think I've had that. We have something called kettle corn, which is pretty similar. It's like a sweet popcorn, but it's naturally sweet. They don't put like, or maybe they do. I don't actually know how they make kettle corn. It's America. Let's assume they put sugar on it. <laughs> yeah, sure. But our popcorns are significantly more savory, as you would say, or salty. Like a gourmet popcorn here is like getting really fancy olive oil. Okay. And then like putting it with, you know, different kind of spices and stuff on it. I'm not sure we get that sort of gourmet with our popcorn, really. Okay, I'm a I'm a double butter purist, like the classic salty butter popcorn. 
Yeah, we don't really get the butter popcorn. It's not like you walk into the cinemas here and it stinks of butter like that rancid, oh, really? horrible stuff that just makes you so happy when you eat it. We don't we don't have <laughs> but we don't have really that come into the equation, does it? So is butter popcorn like weird over there? Yeah, it's always always been and I'm sure Ian's the same, like ever since I was a kid it was salted or sweet. Like that yeah, was it. The butter doesn't really come into it. Weird. So when you guys like Ian when you, or not Ian, Chuck, when you've come to America and have you been to like any chance you've seen a movie here? I know you came when you were younger. Not that I remember. Like maybe when I was like six or seven. So I can't. I can't remember. Like, do you guys do microwave popcorn? Yeah. Yeah. What's on the microwave popcorn? Well, yes. Yeah, so I suppose that is a butter inside. But well, no, it's a type yeah, but, of oil. Yeah, but it's still fit. Like I'm, I had some the other day, and it was just it, like you said, like a sugary sort of glaze type thing on it. Mm. Interesting. 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 Fascinated. Yes. Yeah. Well, over here, like when you get microwave popcorn or when you go to the movie theater, it's just like. Not real butter. It's like a, a fucking yellow spray that tastes like butter. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. Um, and the best one is when you get butter-flavored popcorn. So when it cooks in the bag in the microwave, it gets it turns yellow. It's like at the butter one. And then when okay. you take it out, it has an extra package of butter that's like thicker and liquidier. <laughs> and you pour it on top, and it's double butter popcorn with extra salt. There you go. If you were ever wondering why the healthcare system is so <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> oh, please. You guys are eating it, eating it sweet at the movie theater. Like, that's any healthier. Um, I'm pretty sure a bit of sugar is healthier than a double helping of butter. <laughs> Sounds Fair like enough. a challenge. So yeah. does that sound gross to you? Like, butter no, popcorn? No, butter's good. I love butter, but... <laughs> I just it, <laughs> It's just not part of the zeitgeist. Yeah, it's okay, just not, okay. not a thing that happens. Right, Adam P gets us. Well, he hits our hits our buttons here, food, and uh, then goes back to football. So I'll start with the food because we've been talking about. Yeah, I've had buttons. enough of football. Yeah, all right, but we'll we'll go back to football right at the end. But, nah, fuck uh, it. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which country has the best cuisine? I mean, this could this uh, could be a podcast. I feel like Italian food. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. I Easy. think. I think it, in terms of just, yeah, simple and done well, I don't think there's a cuisine that does few ingredients as well as Italian food does. It's no. just garlic, tomato sauce, pasta or bread and cheese and some sort yeah. of meat sometimes. Win, 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 win. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. all good. It's all good stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's really like not even remotely a question for me. It's Italian food far and away. Yeah, but you also hate Indian food, so... I do hate Indian food. Yeah, and Indian food's a big one for me. I do like yeah. Indian Yeah, I food. hate Indian food with a burning passion. But that's just me. That's not like an American thing. Yeah, Indian yeah, yeah. food is popular over here. I just hate it. It makes me just think, try and think like what's bad. I don't know. It's it's hard to separate because I like <laughs> Isn't food. that the most Chuck fucking statement ever? <laughs> Someone goes, what foods do you like? And he's like, oh, I got to think about what's bad. What do I hate? <laughs> because if, I, if, I, if you eliminate what's bad, then you can kind of focus on what's good. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, I don't know. What is bad? What is bad? What is bad? American food must seem pretty bad to most people. American food. What is American food? What, like... It's such a fusion of everything anyway. Like That's true. Mm. But I would say like classic American dishes are like your hot dogs, your burgers, your pizza. It's not pizza. It's not a fucking classic American <laughs> dish. We're going to keep having this Literally fucking argument. invented it. Pizza is so, not. Yeah. <sighs> no, you're an idiot. They have um, flatbreads in Italy, but they didn't have pizza. God damn the modern it. pizza, whatever. <laughs> Fine. Right. Ignore the word that I said, pizza. Everything was basically invented in China anyway. Everything. You got your wings, you got your burgers, you got your hot dogs, you got yeah, your... Yeah, that's what I would associate, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Pancakes, your... Uh... Fried chicken. Fried chicken, yeah, yeah. definitely fried yeah. chicken. Yeah. Actually, I love American food. And they're all good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do like Chinese food, all that MSG. Yeah. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah, although real mm. China Chinese food is nothing like that at all. No, but it depends which it's because like different countries because of because of obviously the size of China. If yeah, they have like different population areas that emigrate to different countries. Right. So mm. like it depends if they're from like Hong Kong area or Beijing or what have yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, for me the Americanized version of Cantonese food is my what I think of when I think of Chinese food. Yeah. And it's greasy and salty and so fucking good. Yeah. All that MSG. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing like a succulent Chinese meal. Mm. <laughs> What's your go-to that. for Chinese, since we're on the subject? 
a succulent Chinese meal. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that guy's amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, go to Chinese. Uh, crispy duck. Bang. Bang. Problem with Chinese is, is I want loads of all the things. So it's always very yeah. expensive and always a lot. So, yeah. you know, Agreed. there's always... Um, I'm trying to think what would be called in American now, but forget it. Um, so it'd be like prawn toast and Your spring mixed rolls appetizers and like, mixed appetizers yeah. and some ribs and some crispy seaweed. Yeah. And like, you'd have to get a rice and you'd have to get a crispy shredded duck with pancakes and you'd have to get some sort of, uh, yeah. meat dish. Gets expensive. Do you guys do the noodles over there? Is that popular for Chinese food? Yeah. Like chow mein. It's like chow mein, lo mein. Yeah. Yeah. yeah big time. Uh, a lot of people get that. I love um, a lo mein. That's my go-to. What's lo mein? Rice is good too. Lo mein is just like spaghettis with soy sauce and brown sauce, basically. It's like Chinese version of spaghetti, right. and then it has like a the glaze. Chinese version of spaghetti. That's yes. hilarious. Yeah, it's, like Chuck said, we have chow mein, so it's like noodles, bean sprouts. Yeah, but that's more of like a soup vegetables. type thing, right? No, 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 chow mein. Nah. No. Oh, chow mein over here is wet. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's like almost verging on a soup. It's kind of like ramen noodles, but better. Okay. Right, okay. Interesting, then maybe your chow mein is our lo mein. Uh, it could be. But mains wise I'm like Singapore noodles and crispy shredded chili beef. Ah, uh, yeah. It's mostly just batter. There's not really much beef to it. Yeah, bring it on. None yeah. of those are, none of the things you guys have said are things that I would like recognize on a menu, on Chinese food menu. I think our Chinese food's pretty different from yours. Singapore, Singapore noodles or Singapore fried rice is effectively just... A spicy sweet yeah. red sauce with it, with whatever meat, whatever meat it is. It's just a Singapore style. Yeah. It's just more spicy. It's the names, then. It just must be the names. That's weird. Yeah, because it's not like they're Chinese. Like it's all very Americanized or very Englishized. Or the Panda Express. Oh, Panda Express. Panda Express is good. <laughs> you know what? We, t- speaking of foods that I hate, did not enjoy a single fucking meal I ate in Ireland. Really. Yeah, really did not like Irish food. English food surprised me. I liked it. But Ireland was like what I was expecting English food to be. Everything was just boiled and bland. And it was like potatoes, meat, everywhere. Potatoes, meat, cabbage. Yep, lots of cabbage. And bread. Yeah, Yeah, it does sound pretty awful. Not a fan of Irish food. Irish butter, better than any butter I've ever had in the world. (laughs) But other than that. (laughs) The butter episode. (laughs) Yeah, apparently. Um, um, I'm not big on Thai food. Oh, really? Oh, thai I love food's thai amazing. Food. I think yeah, I love thai food. No, Thai food is like slightly healthier Chinese food. Yeah, maybe yep. that's why. And mm-hmm. then Vietnamese food is just like slightly healthier Thai food again, but then it's mm-hmm. like also mixed with the French element. Oh, I've had, I had a Lebanese meal about six months ago. That was good. That was good. That was just like basically a massive meze. I was going to say it's just that or just slow cooked lamb, isn't it? Yeah. That sounds good. Mm. Shove it in my face. Oh, Mexican. I really like Mexican food. That might be up there with Italian food for me. Yeah. It's not as common over there for you guys. No, I probably don't eat as much, but I mean, I do. I like it, but I wouldn't know as much of it as you, I don't think. That's definitely a staple over here. People are obsessed with Mexican food. Meat and rice. Mexican, Chinese, Indian. All good. Yeah. I don't know enough French food to know what I'm talking about, really. Everything fancy. You'd love French food. It's everything's with double cream, with yeah, goose sure. fat. <laughs> like, it's all ridiculously indulgent. How, yeah, how it's do very you know, like, rich and savoury. Yeah. Damn. And then German is just all sausage. Love a all sausage. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Just put that sausage right in my mouth all day. Um, <laughs> my, my, we went to Berlin a couple of years ago. And my son was just mad on curry verst. It was yeah. just like every every stool thing we went past. Can I have another one? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Curry, ketchup, sausage. Just, yeah. Ugh, ugh. Hard pass. You're mental. I don't like curry. I just don't. That, I mean, that's what it is with Indian food. Don't like the smell. Don't like the taste. So are we officially going with Italian then? No. No? No. What are you going with, <laughs> Chuck? I don't know. Don't make me decide. I don't want to get rid of some of the food. If I choose one, then it, it ruins all others. No one's making you get rid of food. Just what's no, your is, 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 that, that was the question. That was the question. Is which food do you that keep? Wasn't. 
to get rid of all the no, others. Wasn't. Yeah, you that's made exactly this up. what that really said. was not that question at all. <laughs> no, and it makes you it too hard. And I it's nice it. to hear how things get translated into Chuck's head, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you like? You're not allowed to have anything I won't be else. Able to, if I teleport, I won't be able to wear clothes again. Um, <laughs> I just can't do it. And <laughs> I, Listener, if you can't tell, he's crying and rocking back and forth. I'm just trying to think, what is one food I could eat every single day and never get sick of it. Oh, but anything would get boring. Pizza. Pizza for me, I know that's not Italian food, but I could eat pizza every single meal for the rest of my life forever. See, I could eat I could eat wings and ribs every single day and never get sick of it. Which of us would have a heart attack first? <laughs> Game on. Really? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the new podcast idea. <laughs> Ian's making gout steak. Oh. I'm eating wings and ribs. Yeah. And you're just pizza it up maybe with some ice cream. I told I told some friends your your ice cream story this week, Oscar. Oh, actually, nice. that reminds me, they were all horrified, and they went, "Of course he's American." <laughs> yeah, that is the correct reaction to that story. <laughs> Although, for the record, all of my American friends are also horrified by it. New listeners are like, "What ice cream story?" Go back and listen. Then that's what you got to do. What episode was that? Do we know? We have no idea. I don't know. They'll find it. Yeah, it was probably in the title about your competitive ice cream eating. I mean, we we would have titled it, I'm sure. I tell you what, we'll 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 table the rest of Adam P's questions, which are all football related anyway, until yeah, we don't another know. another episode. Obviously, it's international break now, so next week we're going to have to do something else. So, Oscar, what we got planned for next week? <laughs> I'm gonna have to sync up you beatboxing with. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're gonna do a Game of Thrones special. Yay! Yay! What's a Game of Thrones? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys remember when we had Dave Mateo on for the Super Marvel Special Spectacular right after R.I.P. Stanley? Uh, the season eight of Thrones is coming up very soon. And oh yeah, it's like next month, isn't it? Yeah, if, uh, four yep. weeks away. Not long. Ian and myself are very big fans of the show, and Chuck has seen it or some I of it. I watched it, didn't it? Incest. Um, yeah. So we figured we would do a Game of Thrones special because it's what we want to talk about this close to the new season. And we do have someone lined up to be a very special, super mega special guest. Do we? Yeah. Yeah. Sh- shall we say it now, or should we save it for next week? Yeah, do it. All right. Well, for the first time on the general pod. This person did already feature on a Patreon episode of something once. The good doctor, Miss Emily, my wife. Ah, the doctor will see you now. Yeah, exactly. Well, she won't see you, but you'll hear the doctor now. Cool. (laughs) Sounds good. (laughs) She's pretty knowledgeable. She's a big Game of Thrones fan. She's a big fan of all nerdy things just like me, so. And to be honest, you don't want to listen to us. Yeah, the less of us, the more of her, the better, I think. True, she's a doctor. (laughs) Yeah. And Chuck, you can take the Ian role this time around, being the one that doesn't really know that much. Like when we were talking about Marvel and Ian was like, I saw Marvel once. Well done for saving it there. Yeah, it was just about to be a real cut on Ian and we almost made it through a whole show without taking the piss out of him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'd be delighted over it. Yeah. Masturbating furiously. Standard. Yeah, so stick around next week for the Game of Thrones international break, super mega spectacular special show. So if you've got any thoughts or questions or... Are there predictions. Any theories about yeah predictions. Although please no production spoilers. If you are someone who goes on Reddit and looks up things that happened, like you know people got recording yeah. filming set footage, and so that spoils a location that they're going to do. That. None of that. Please do us a favor. Be kind to yeah. us. We don't want to know those things. But anything that you've theories you've come up with from watching the show or reading the books or watching the trailer, all that sort of yeah. stuff is fair game. Just no production spoilers. Yeah, just spoil it. All the spoilers. <laughs> All the spoilers, yeah. Send us your theories, send us your questions, send us your comments, and we will get yeah. all into there next week. Oscar will probably have a spreadsheet. Some other stuff will happen. Who uh, knows? I already have a spreadsheet. Yeah, I know you do. I'll well, save it for next week, you bloody yeah. Lo- yeah, yeah, loser. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but that kind of wraps us for this week, then. We did a bit of a bumper one-parter, so you know, hopefully you guys aren't still sitting outside of work waiting to go in before the episode finishes or done another lap around the block on your lunch break. Um, just to get through the whole thing. Um, you're a trooper. Um, that about wraps it up. So, thanks, Ian. Thank you. Thanks, Oscar. Thank you. And thanks, me. Thanks. 
Thanks, Chuck. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.